more recently this year, we have introduced a sales team. And so we've been working really closely with them to kind of understand, you know, what are feedback points that they're getting? Um, how do those kind of match up to feedback that we get from customer success, customer support, who's another huge tool uh, for us in terms of aggregating feedback and just making sure that we're tracking and addressing feedback. Um, Tammy is a huge part of our organization and how we kind of um, measure what customer needs are and what the kind of potential value is uh, for addressing that feedback. Yeah, I think you, you definitely touched on a really important topic there too, is um, it, it's nice to talk kind of from an abstract of like, oh, this is the feedback that I'm hearing, but the really cool thing is when sales can put a number behind that feedback, right? And to say, hey, this potential deal is worth 100,000 in ARR to us. That means this feedback is very important. <laughs> um, so that's, I think, one thing that, that definitely it can be, uh, you know, especially through our CRM integrations, you know, pulling that data in kind of, I think it's, it's communicating with product without even having to have a conversation. If it just shows up and that deal value is there, that speaks louder than words, I think. Yeah. And, and and Eric, if I may, there's there's many wrinkles that you can kind of throw in here. So on call actually used to sell uh, into kind of like the solo practitioner, the SMB market, and we've moved upstream to enterprise. So over the years, we've seen like logging these product requests. It's really important to attribute like a deal value to it, and then kind of like you know not just the number of feature requests, but like also how. Uh, how much revenue we could tie to that. And it's been interesting to kind of watch that over time. Yeah, I think, I think that's super interesting is, um, you know, we've often said that, you know, not all feedback is necessarily as uh, valuable or, or, or uh, prescriptive really, you know, like mm -hmm. kind of run into the, you know, the noisy crowd situation where you might have, a thousand people that have no revenue potential saying they want something. And, you know, that has the impact of leading product to build those features. Whereas what's actually going to drive revenue and what is going to uh, deliver value is, is the, you know, the, the actual paying customers. So it's good to have them segmented yeah. out. I mean, there is, there is one more thing too. like, just say you have, uh, kind of the outlier customer that has maybe like a, a ton of revenue potential, but it would kind of take your product roadmap off track. So like, I, I would say the other thing to throw in there is, you know, what we call is ICP, ide ideal customer profile. So the feedback loop between sales and product really helps to define that. Uh, you know, for example, uh, not, um, uh, you know, not, not every deal that we're working is going to be a hundred percent aligned with what, where the product is, but the closer that we get to building a better product for our, our, our ideal customer profile, the easier it is to sell into that group. And then like, in turn, the more customer feedback we receive, the more defined our ideal customer profile is, if that makes sense. Com completely. We actually uh, are going to be publishing a guide um, to leveraging uh, feedback for sales and through interviewing people, uh, salespeople from other companies that we are featuring in this guide. Uh, we often heard the story that product goes out and builds a new feature and then just tells the sales team about it. And it's like, go and sell this. <laughs> and they're like, well, this is not what our customers want. So this isn't yeah. going to help me with my sales. And um, yeah, I think just being aligned gets everyone more success, right? Yeah.